Hello, welcome to Catalyst. Like much of the energy produced in Australia, the electricity running through those power lines was made by burning coal. And we're now very aware, of course, of just how much greenhouse gas our coal-fired power stations are pumping into the sky. So we're looking for cleaner alternatives. One of the front runners is nuclear. And in China, they're pushing ahead with their nuclear program with a massive expansion planned for the next 15 years. Could their experience help shape Australia's nuclear future? Mark Horseman finds out. The fastest growing economy in the world is racing to find enough energy to feed itself. You only have to look at both sides of the Pudang River in Shanghai to get a sense of what's driving the energy explosion. The contrast along this river symbolises China's booming growth and rapid change. Over the last century, people have looked to this side to see Shanghai's prosperity. But in just the last 15 years, this futuristic skyline has risen from the other side. As the Chinese saying goes, Chu de Chu, Xin de Bulai. If the old doesn't go, then the new can't come. China is being transformed. Energy consumption is skyrocketing, expected to double in the next 15 years. Even then, it will still consume less than the United States. But from China's perspective, there's a lot of catching up to do. The people in China, they like to have a big house. They like to have better living standards. And uh, you certainly need some nuclear tech energy. That's where Australia comes in. As the only major uranium producer in the world without its own nuclear power stations, we've signed an agreement to supply our uranium to China. Australia will need to mine twice as much yellow cake just to meet China's future demand. Our nuclear future will be shaped by what we can learn from China's experience in nuclear energy. If China can use a safe and uh, cost-effective energy source. It would be better for this country, and I think it would be better for the world. At the other end of the uranium trail, to the north and south of Shanghai, are most of China's nine commercial nuclear reactors. This is the massive Qinshan complex of five nuclear reactors generating 3,000 megawatts of electricity. One of them is China's newest, and that's the one we've come to visit. Like all of the power plants here, it's a pressurized water reactor, or PWR. As our Catalyst crew arrives, we're met by an army of Qinshan's highest ranking executives. Our nuclear power plant is just like a garden. In the spirit of China's nuclear industry, declares this billboard, caution is everything. That's why their government has adopted the PWR, a standard design that's been in use around the world for nearly 50 years. We call it the nuclear island. Nuclear island. Yeah, yeah, all the uh, nuclear fuel are stored in, the, in this continent. Inside the reactor are bundles of fuel rods filled with pellets of enriched uranium. The core generates intense heat by splitting uranium atoms and controlling the chain reaction. The pressurized water reactor gets its name from the water used to cool it, kept under high pressure to stop it boiling. The superheated water is used to make steam, which drives turbines. Its efficiency is how much heat it takes to make a megawatt of electricity. What is the efficiency of this reactor? Uh, this is efficiency is about uh, 31, 31%. Surprisingly, that's less efficient than a coal-fired power station in Australia. And there's much more at stake running a water-cooled reactor like this one. Pipes become brittle, water becomes radioactive, valves have to withstand enormous pressures, and if the cooling system fails, the core can melt down. 
there's only seconds to make the right decision in an emergency. If you want to uh, uh, shut, uh, shut down the reactor, uh, here, uh -huh. use here buttons. Have you ever had to use these buttons? Uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good news for the millions of people in eastern China at the end of the power lines. But for the farming families living next door to Qinshan, it's too close for comfort. There'll be many more generations growing up in the shadow of reactors as another 30 are built over the next 15 years. That's at least two every year. The fastest rollout of nuclear power in history is a program of national scientific pride. But for a country that speaks of out with the old and in with the new, China is building the kinds of reactors that are being demolished elsewhere in the world. Like the cooling tower of this pressurised water reactor in Oregon, shut down 20 years early because it wasn't worth fixing its leaky steam pipes anymore. If the PWR has had its day, what could come next? We don't have to go far to find out. This is the outskirts of Beijing, and I'm at the gate of one of the only nuclear reactors of its type in the world. It's taken months of negotiation, but hopefully I'm about to be loud in. Kept under wraps inside this innocuous box at Tsinghua University is a Chinese prototype reactor that researchers claim is uniquely safe. This reactor currently is the only paper bed tested reactor in the world. When Professor Wu Zhongjin started nuclear research in the early 60s, water-cooled reactors were all the rage. So were the hats. The pebble bed reactor he runs now is radically different. This is the safe part. Oh, okay. This the vessel is for steam generator. This vessel for reactor. Because instead of fuel rods, his reactor is filled with 27,000 of these, the nuclear pebble. No problem. <laughs> Luckily, they're built strong enough here to be dropped 50 times before they break. Each pebble is a perfect graphite sphere filled with specially coated particles of enriched uranium. So these are the radioactive particles, the, the heart of the fuel. Uh, yeah, heart fuel here. And outside we coat it four layers. 8,000 particles inside a hollow sphere means that each pebble works like a mini reactor. The pebbles are recycled around and through the core. Uh, it's the fission energy produced okay. in the core. Its high running temperatures are more efficient for generating electricity. Because these reactors use helium gas for cooling instead of complicated plumbing, they should also be safer to operate. Yeah. That is very different from other reactors where it's water under pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, this is the feature of the reactor. Yes. Is the helium for the cool, uh, coolant. That's very different. It all leads to a daring safety test that would be unthinkable in any other power plant. For this reactor, I think basically we can prove it is a matter-free reactor. The professor invites scientists from around the world to watch what happens when you deliberately set up an accident by switching off the cooling system. That sounds like a dangerous thing to do in a nuclear reactor, to get it running, get it critical and then turn off the cooling system. Yeah, 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 sure. It's the very, very dangerous. Is the, is of uh, course. What they do here is exactly what causes catastrophic meltdowns at water-cooled reactors, as happened at Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. But is it dangerous here? Uh, no, no, okay. Because we always we have to some the pass we remove all the sticky heat. So the reactor is able to get rid of more heat than it can actually hold in itself. The nuclear physics inside this reactor means that the higher the temperature, the slower the chain reaction. Unlike a water-cooled reactor, the pebble bed doesn't go into meltdown. The reactor goes to sleep and the test is a success. The philosophy here 
is that reactor safety should rely on physics, not reinforced concrete. Safety is number one. We should avoid the nuclear accident. Just when I thought the safety issues were solved, we're in the elevator going to see some barrels in the basement. The waste storage facility is secured behind some wooden doors. What to do with growing piles of nuclear waste is a problem that not even this reactor can solve. Do you believe pebble bed reactors are the safest form of nuclear? I think so. it's most uh, uh, recognised by the international nuclear community. So in the future, new reactors could all be pebble bed reactors? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> The professor laughs because he understands the commercial realities. Another 10 water-cooled reactors will be built before the first pebble bed is even up and running. So what does this mean for Australia? Professor Jung hopes that one day we will use pebble bed reactors from China. But for now, he's surprisingly frank about our own nuclear capability. It's better not to use nuclear energy forcefully um, because the nuclear you need a lot of infrastructure you have need a lot of experienced people so be careful i think the best way is you can share the uranium i think it is the best way you just get money and you have don't need a lot of work